Well, we'll cover this morning is what I call the evolution of concrete countertop and the polishing evolution. When concrete countertop started out, people were attempting to make fake granite, or they were attempting to follow what the granite industry is. That's why you see people, they start at 50 grit, then they go to 100, then they go to 200, then they go to 400, then they go to 800, then they go to 1500, then they go to 3000, and then they would seal it with a sealer that didn't work. So they were doing a couple things wrong. Number one, concrete is not granite, so you don't need to go 50 to 3,000 to make it nice and shiny. Number two, concrete is calcium carbonate based. Granite has less than 1% lime in it. Granite is very low pH. At steel mills, when they have pickling baths, they line the bottom of the pickling bath, which is an acid bath, with granite slabs. You would never line them with concrete, they would disappear. So this led to the problems with sealers not working. They did great against stains because it was dense. You could make 10 or 15,000 or 20,000, but it didn't do anything to stop acids from ruining the concrete. So what I did is when I started, I said, let's look at what they're doing and why. Above 200, I mean below 200, when the concrete's wet, you won't see any marks left by the polisher. So that was the first thing. So why go above 200 ever? Well, maybe to get more of a shine you can. You get a little bit more shine out of the 400. And then the sealers were the next thing you looked at. There is no penetrating sealer that seals concrete 100% protects its mass. It doesn't exist. So why are we going to 3,000 when we have to use a sealer that protects it? For instance, our H12 sealer that has become quickly the industry standard doesn't need you to go above 200 to hide the scratch marks. So all this was wasted time and money and equipment going up to 3,000 and things. Now the next step is how do you get there? What do you need to do to your concrete to get there? Well, for a MAC finish, sometimes you can start and end at 200. If you have to open something up like exposed that area, maybe 50, 100, and then 200. But the next evolution has become concrete as an indoor surface looks more modern. It doesn't have, there's still times when you want to expose glass or something like that. But for the most part, you don't need to do any of this if you're concrete. Because it costs a lot of money and it's, uh, people don't care if you go to 3,000 or if you go to 200 or whatever. They don't care if you use mechanical means. So, so what started as buying all these consumables and 2,500, 700, you know, forty dollars for pads has turned into what we'll show you today is a uh, muriatic acid, ammonia, and wet dry sandpaper. Because as I said, all we want to do is take the surface film off, make it look somewhat uniform, and seal it. Now the sealers have got to be nanoparticles, which means they don't they can penetrate almost anything. They have a slight surface. So rather than use all these, what we'll show you today is the surface of our concrete. If we were to try to hand sand this, it would take tremendous effort to get down through and make it look uniform. And that's why thus we use the equipment. But if we were to break the surface open with acid, what it'll do is it'll leave the sand grains just a little bit proud. And then if we hand sand this, it'll get the whole finish uniform. Just with a couple, we'll do that one. Just a couple minutes and you're done. Now that being said, you still can use all these at certain times. A lot of people have gone to the three-headed uh, rotary polishers like this. Or this is about 2500. This everyone needs at least one grinder, either five or seven inch, just for the process that you have to polish. These are about 800. Buy a good brand name, buy ones that you can replace the brushes easily, and then put a bag or whatever to protect it so that water's not flying over the place. Now there's different uh, bendability for the pads that go on these. When you're doing an initial cut and you want everything to be perfectly flat, 
and you use a super rigid one, like these aluminum ones, when you're getting to a point where it's getting done, something with a little bit of flex helps more, like these rubber ones. And then when you're doing the insides of sinks, I don't mind doing them by, by hand if you've got a round part. You cut the pad down, or if they sell three inch holders, don't throw these pads out when you wear them out because they become flexible. So now you can push and it'll do the inside of the corners of sinks. That's how I did that one with all the rocks in there. And then there's hand pads. These come in different grips the same way that uh, these do. Now for the edge of the sink, that sink will do today, if there's flaws in it, I would cut it with 60 just to round it out a little bit. Then I'd go to 100 and then 200 and you're done. You could do your whole piece with this and just take a small mop because they're, they're so small. And incidentally, you can buy these from a company online and buy these pads from a company called JannyLink, JannyLink.com. The reason Bob and I don't sell these is because they sell them for less than we can buy them for. They're like twelve ninety five, and they're high quality. They have a uh, polishing pads for about fifteen dollars. A lot of ones made from marble, they work fine. But then, rather than buying one of these, you want to do a whole bunch of slabs. What I did is I bought a uh, buffer on Craigslist for one hundred twenty five bucks, and I made my own handle to it. Now this is a horsepower and a half, and this is you know less than a horsepower. So which one's going to last long? You know, the big one or the little one? This is probably from the 60s. And then I made my own pad holder on the bottom. Hmm. But since I've done this, that company, Janeway, came out with a mini buffer that's only 12 inch. It's like $800, and they guarantee it for five years. And then they also sell pad drivers for it. That would be better. But the root I like the best is this acid, ammonia, wet dry sandpaper root, or this is called a Merca sander. This one's electric so it doesn't bog down and keeps spinning. For small pieces, you can use this along the auto net sandpaper. But all we're doing is we're opening up the surface with acid, getting it flat, neutralizing it with ammonia, which is important, and then waiting one day and you're ready for sealants. So all this has been eliminated unless you're doing any cutting or anything like that. Because people won't pay you for this. They won't pay you because you own leads. So why do you use them? Unless you're opening something up. If you're doing that, get paid to do it. Don't uh, use consumables. So now we're going to take that piece and open it with acid and finish it by hand. We'll show you how easy it is. You start with 10 to 1 acid. 10 water, 1 acid. And if that's not cutting it, you can go to 5 to 1 if you need to, depending on the surface of your concrete. And then with uh, ammonia, always use ammonia to neutralize. Never use baking soda to so leave residue behind and turn stuff white. Even for outdoor projects, you should always use ammonia because it works better. And it's benign. You tell by the look on your face, you've been oh, on that road before. Oh, baking soda. You just always use baking soda. It does okay, but yeah, I didn't realize, realize it leaves that much of a residue. Well, it's salt. Works. Baking soda is sodium bicarbonate. So what happens is this is dissolves down into the concrete as the concrete dries or if it gets wet again it keeps purging to the top and it can really cause an issue with the sealers and all. The yeah. sealers do. Mm -hmm. So, so now we'll, we'll, uh, we'll put on our protective here and we'll open that piece up and then sand it to show you how easy it is. And what happens when you put acid on, always start at the low point, work your way high, because if a drip runs and runs down, it might show up later. It's the same with acid, uh, acid staining. But when the acid hits, it's going to work, and it's not going to keep going, because this is like a 12, 12 and a half pH right now. So this is going to neutralize the acid really fast, so you don't have to worry about freaking out, but you know, work gloves and whatever. But you start low, and acid will take the... Uh, We'll take off the wax. That's muriatic acid. Yep. Ten to one, muriatic. 
it'll it'll darken the see that it's it, working, it, 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 but it darkens the piece and you see it start to remove uh, a little bit of the look. Now this is where we screwed it up yesterday, remember? Doug. I may never go away. I'm looking at this and I probably need a little bit stronger yeah, it's not really foaming at all. I was going to say, you don't want to see it busy. Uh, sometimes it will. Oh, sometimes it okay. will. Most of your cue is you'll see a material being Oh, okay. Like, you know what I mean? Right now it's taking a little off. This is 10 to 1. So if I want to, I'll go with uh, 5 to 1. So it'll eat through it quick. You'll feel it. It's two things. It's look and feel. Right now I feel it. It's starting to get a little bit gritty feeling. Yeah, it's working. I'd rather sneak up on it and get crazy from the start. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can feel it. This is plenty good enough. But yesterday when we poured this, we waited 15, 20 minutes, then we took our hand on the face cut like this. Sometimes that won't come out. Same with that. But the other flaws are slowly disappearing. The way it looks now is about the way it's going to look once you seal it. So if you can see or not see a flaw now, see that? It is happening now? Because I broke open the, uh, yeah, I broke open that layer. And I put fresh product on, and then it's, uh, it activates. See it? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. right there. That's what I was about. Yeah, it doesn't happen right away, but it's got to get through that wax layer. But it will take the wax off, too, if it needs to do wax. But see the way it's kind of starting to look nice, and I can feel it now. Yes, I, I can hear it. Here, I can hear it's different. You know. But for a class made uh, project, this thing came out pretty nice. Pretty saleable if it wasn't for. Somebody wrote their name in it. It's always built, by the way. He wrote it. Now, if we were patient, so now you see the fizz we talked about. White. Because my rag is fresh, with fresh acid. My piece is open. Now, see it? Feel it, you can hear it. Now they're probably basically disturbed the face coat. Plus, it needs time to actually, you're not sure where we're supposed to look you for. But uh, that sample, I don't know who brought the sample, we can make that sample do the same thing we're doing here. Okay, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> I'll clean that one with that stone first. <coughs> Move the wax. See that? For me, I'm done. <laughs> See the rag? You can get a little gray on it. But that looks pretty damn good to me. What happens if it will break the wax down a little bit? And always yeah, keep another bucket in there. Kind of just imagine wow. the acids on your. So you still have well, to you keep the ten to one bucket in there. So it's better to use. Yeah. Uh, you can. Uh, it would take it off. Yeah. Back to that problem. Right. Yeah. 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 Y
So you got this thing. Now I've rinsed the whole thing with water. It's still not neutralized. Hey, That is a troll. That is not. Squeezing. Squeezing. <laughs> just, just so we're now this is clear. 10 to 1 ammonia. Next day, wipe it off. And it will neutralize everything without leaving a film behind. Okay. 10 to 1. 10 to 1. 10 to 1. I mean, 1 ammonia, 10 water. And it will wake you up in the morning. No, that's not it. It's not it. You're going to ask the same you're going to ask the same thing. It's a mailbox. Freaking bad. Now, the next step is the wet dry sandpaper. This costs about a buck fifty a sheet. But all you're doing is you're plowing the sand. So it's really easy. Big old tractor Four hundred bucks. Half inch thick. Well big shot. Really? I've seen multiple ones near me that are smoking in Elmont. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 Thank <laughs> you. 